What's up guys? This is a girl Phoenix and welcome to another video. Today we're doing episode 3 of Draw Like an Architect and we're going to be doing something super essential that you should know as a beginning architecture student or if someone's interested in learning how to read construction documents, I got you. We're understanding plans, sections, and elevations. So if you're new to my channel, welcome to the Hush Designer Studio. I'm Phoenix and I'm an architectural designer. And without further ado, I don't want to make this intro too long. Let's get started. So let's prepare and get our materials ready. You'll need your 005, 03, 08, an architecture scale, a ruler, eraser, paper of your choice, I'll be using my roll of trace paper, masking tape or drafting dots, a T-square, which is a very affordable option if you don't have a drafting board. Drafting triangles, I modified mine for a bit of a lift just because I don't want smudging on my drawings. Circle stencils are optional, it's just to draw entourage, chairs, doors, and of course, your pencil. If you want to make your life easier, I recommend you have your components ready, just make sure they're to scale. Next, we're cleaning our work surface and our tools. It's important to keep our drawings clean, especially if you're presenting this for class, because you don't want to end up with this on your drawings. Mm-hmm, nasty. Another good practice to do is wash your hands. Like after you just ate a snack, oil, dirt, and food are enemies when it comes to hand drawings. Next is the good stuff, and please don't mind my feet. <laughs> yeah. So this is to show drafting without a drafting board, and all you need is a 90 degree straight edge table. You have this offset gap on your T-square to fit snug on the edge, and you can easily glide the T-square ruler. Your drafting triangles, they are placed on the top side of your T-square, and you can easily create your vertical or diagonal lines. The only drawback of having a T-square is holding it down. You can also use a clamp if you want to be extra secure. Let's set up the paper! You're gonna align your paper according to your T-square. You wanna get the paper as evenly aligned as possible. Once you're done, secure the paper with your drafting tape. If your tape is too sticky and you fear ripping your drawings, after you rip a piece, stick the tape to your skin to loosen the adhesive and then secure the paper. So let's get started with Mr. Park's house. After contracts, discussions, sketches, this is the final program that Mr. Park wanted for his house. For him, his wife, and a room for the guest. First, I'm creating the baseline, and I'm offsetting my drawing 2 inches away from the paper's edge. If you want to make sure the baseline is even, draw a 2 inch mark on the other side, then connect both lines. Next, take your drafting triangle and draw the center line. This is a 17 inch paper, so the center line is at eight and a half inches. We're gonna be using an architecture scale. This one is not in millimeters. I'm really used to using inches or the imperial system. Either way, using a scale is very straightforward. For this tutorial, I'm using a 1 8 inch scale. So these clustered measurements that you see are what represents the fraction. So 1 8 inch would represent one foot. And we're starting off with drawing the whole perimeter of Mr. Park's one-story property. So the total width of his house is about 60 feet. Make sure you find the median so you can center his house on the paper. For me, I like to just draw lines across most of the paper until I know how far back the house goes. Then I would write the dimension just to keep track. This is why it's useful to draft in pencil before you make everything permanent with your pens. Next, mark up the length of the house. Length is about 60 feet as well. And strike a line through. Next, create your horizontal measurements. This includes landscape, walkways, and the house's outer walls. I'm doing the other side as well. Then you create your vertical measurements and strike your lines through. The idea is to start with exterior elements before proceeding to the internal walls. I think the process is a lot more easier that way. Next, 
Next, we're doing the guts of the house, which are the interior walls, the length of bedrooms, bathroom, walk-in closets. We're doing the left-hand side first, since most of the walls are there. On the right-hand side, you would just need to deal with the storage and laundry, which is a lot less lines. Next, I'm measuring where the openings would occur, such as the windows, doors, garage doors, wall openings. But focus on the outer walls first before you go ahead and doing the interior. I'm labeling OP next to the opening so I know where they are, and so I don't accidentally draw a line over them. And yes, don't be dumb like me, where I mistakenly added a wall. Later, you'll see it be covered up. Here, I'm using the 08 to thicken up the outer walls. Reason why I'm doing this is usually the interior walls are a smaller stud profile compared to the outer walls. The structural wall is also known as the shear wall. Then I'm going ahead and drawing my interior walls and openings. Lastly, I'm taking my component table and placing it underneath the trace paper. If your trace paper is a thicker material, you can use a light table to be 10,000 times more easier. You can also make your own light table if you have a glass table and a lamp. But if you do that, place a filter on the lamp to filter out the light so you don't damage your eyes. So this is the magic of hand drafting. If you have a template prepared ahead of time or if you have a stencil with all the components, then you're good. Finally, this is the outcome of the hand drawings. And that's it! Project North versus True North One of the most important ideas of architecture drawings is to understand Project North, which we just drew, versus True North. Drawings are just easier for the user to read when it's in Project North. And a site plan and also depending on the project's size and the firm's preference, they would orient the building to True North into their drawings which is basically the true direction the building is oriented. So this is an example of me drawing a site plan where you can see the top of the building's roof, landscape, and people also put utilities around the building. I'm drawing this in 3 32nd inch equals a foot, and this time I'm using the 30 degree angle of my drafting triangle. This is to show a size comparison between the scales. A brief about construction drawings. Typically, if you're presenting a realistic construction drawing, it's not usually printed on 11 by 17. It is okay if the drawing is still in concept or the schematic phase, but for construction drawings, it would be set in a 24 by 36 or 30 by 42, just like this. Though, please refer to your state or country's requirements for permanent drawing sizes. Also, drawings nowadays are not hand-drawn. Firms usually use BIM, building information modeling such as Autodesk Revit, or other firms would still use AutoCAD. I just wanted to show a traditional way of drafting so you can briefly understand drawing scales or if you need it for class and be more efficient with your drawing process. And that wraps it up. Okay guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it of helping Mr. Park with his house drawings part one. And for the next video, we're doing sections and elevations and it's a continuation. Again, this is not a real project. This is purely for educational purposes only. I actually composed all of these drawings just for fun and to educate you guys, to help you guys out. Because I got you. And I want to pass down my tips to you guys. And as always, please give this video a like, subscribe, and please share this to a friend, a family member, someone who needs these tips. And I'll see you guys in the next one.